Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Chargers, it's been a change of pace these last six weeks for our world, but let's take the positives that's come from this pandemic. I know I appreciate some of the smaller things in life that I took for granted before. How about the smell of fresh flowers blooming, the beauty of trees budding to life, and the fresh cut of grass? As we start to move forward in this month of May, don't let the time just pass you by. Let's remember to live each day with that openness to experience life and be grateful for the small things in our life each day. My hope is you have renewed in yourself a new sense of wonder to take each day as a blessing. Let's remember to be present in our life and not just get through life. Remember our mantra of charge? Create habits around real goals every day. Chargers, I recently recorded a webinar entitled Positive Habits Equal Positive Results. If you are a leader who struggles with how to handle the daily stress in your life, With high performance coaching, we've created a framework that helps leaders gain clarity, energy, courage, productivity, and influence. When you get clarity, you get the feeling of full engagement, joy, and confidence that comes from consistently living from and into your full potential. To view this webinar, go to chargepodcast.com and we will have a link to the webinar on the page. Each week this month, We have a great guest lined up that will give you a perspective on how you can live your life with high performance. You've heard the phrase, the student becomes the teacher. Well, today, my guest, Nathan Akpan, used to work for one of our companies. He is now sharing his knowledge on how you can make the quantum leap in your life, career or business. Nathan shares how when we unlock our greater potential, it allows us to be unstoppable. I know you're going to enjoy this conversation, Chargers, so let's get it started. Chargers, welcome back again this week for another great podcast. I'm so excited you decide to join us each and every week to see our different guests, to hear their viewpoints, to get their information, and then take action in your life. Remember, it is the Charge Podcast. Create habits around real goals each and every day. This is the key. Really making them small habits allow us to get great results. And today I've got a great guest with you that you're going to love the information that he shares. A good friend of mine, Nathan Akban. He's a speaker, a life and business strategist, and the subconscious behaviorist who is passionate about helping people unlock their greater potential and free them from the shackles of mind conditioning. Dubbed as the young Wayne Proctor by some of his peers, which is a play on being a hybrid of the late Wayne Dyer and the iconic personal growth teacher, Mr. Bob Proctor. Due due to his marriage of high performance, psychological principles with timeless universal and metaphysical principles, he is unendingly fascinated about the mind and employs a variety of modalities like active and conversational hypnosis, NLP, handwriting analysis, real-time advanced neural feedback, thought field, thought field therapy, and others to help his clients achieve higher states of performance and consciousness. He possesses a talent for public speaking and a great ability to break complex ideals down to what is familiar to his audience of any age. His teaching style is definitely one to experience. He has taken up the mission of reaching 10 million people in the next 10 years through his online programs, live teaching seminars, and retreats around the world, and wishes to do more work in developing nations to empower them in use of their minds in altering where they're going. Now today, welcome, Nathan. Nathan, it's great to have you on the Charge Podcast, my friend. My, My pleasure, Gary. Thank you for having me. 
Well, we are so excited. We're going to get in all that information because I love the mind too. And I know our audience is going to be really excited to hear the information that you share with us. But before we do, I call it the Charge Podcast on Purpose. Purpose, create habits around real goals every day. What habit or habits do you think has led to success in your life, Nathan? Uh, If I were to point to one specific habit, I would actually say it is my fitness habit. Um, And that is specifically because there are a lot of parallels between that particular habit and other aspects of, of, of life in general. Yeah, and that fitness aspect becomes huge because it kind of gives you the energy to do the work that you do each and every day. And a lot of my audience hears that. And of course, we're in second quarter of 2020 now. And a lot of people had that down as a New Year's resolution or a goal. And if you fell off, go back to what you need to do to be able to get yourself in that mode to be able to make those changes that you want each and every day. Now, Nathan, if you would, we've given you the bio and I've shared the bio with you and a lot of great information there, but can you tell us more just what you do um, in that bio when you're working with individuals and organizations? Absolutely. I know, I know the bio, <laughs> it's, a, it's a mouthful, but very specifically, um, to boil it down, I help individuals and groups. So, you know, teams or organizations move towards their goal and and the goal achievement is the ultimate is the is the ultimate um it's the goal right but here's what happens is in the process of seeking a goal you will come across many obstacles so then what we do is work with these individuals to remove these obstacles that come up along the way and and it's just the goal is the magnet right but then we're really on an obstacle course. And that is what I help individuals, high-performing individuals. And what we found is that these obstacles are mainly internal obstacles. Even in the, in, in the case of an organization, it's usually internal. And so that's basically what I do is, is I help facilitate their transformation and growth such that they can get what it is that they have set their heart upon achieving. And that's the thing I think most people forget about Nathan is they think about, they see somebody that's successful and they say, wow, they've just been so successful, but they forget about along the road, they had many obstacles. Also, we all will face them no matter what stage of life you're in, you're going to face obstacles. And I think as people realize that everyone has to face those obstacles and they have to also you're going to get more accomplished. You're going to be a more of a high performer. You're going to be able to increase what you want to achieve to be able to really able to achieve that. And I'm sure you've seen that with the people that you've worked with also. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, they say different strokes for different folks and no matter how high you get, you will always be faced with a specific obstacle. You know, even in, in, in a growing organization or with a person who is seeing so much success, even that in itself could be an obstacle and could be a blind spot to them being able to perceive certain things. And so if I also were to put it another way is actually being able to give them perspective, right? Because the truth is we don't really give them answers. The answers already exist. And what we do is we help direct your focus and the attention to things that they may not have been aware of just because it was so close to to the event in and of itself. So that's, that's one of the parts um, I did. I was a little short on what I do. The other part, obviously, that you spoke about um, in the intro is I'm also a speaker. So I speak to, to groups of people or individuals espousing the principles. Okay, so the same principles that I use when I work with individuals one-on-one are also form the foundation of some of the things that I talk about. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm certain we'll probably cover some of those principles as we continue the conversation. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about, I, there's a lot of promotion and a lot of talk about purpose right now. Um, could you talk about why you feel that's such an important thing to know your purpose and know why you're doing something? Absolutely. Um, you know, purpose is a very important um, topic and concept. It's actually the reason why one of my, um, you know, marketing phrases or um, almost trademarks is addicted to purpose. And that is because 
upon evaluation of everything that we do, it kept pointing back to this one thing. And that was the, the need and the importance to have purpose. Because without purpose, we don't have direction, right? You can even have a high achieving individual who is crushing it and who's doing the things that, you know, the world considers successful, but within themselves, you're unfulfilled. And in order to find fulfillment, a person must be aligned to purpose, right? So I, I usually give an example of, you know, we're talking about, say, for instance, you're the, the messenger, the sentinel to a king, and the king sends you on a mission to go deliver a specific message. And at the end of the day, you go, you spend a year, you know, let's imagine it was back in a day when there were no cars. You spend a year traveling this long distance. And at the end of the day, you come back. And the king asked you, so did you deliver the message? You said, yeah, no, I did not. The letter is still in my pouch. But hey, by the way, I got all of these gifts that I purchased along the way. And the question is, will that king be excited about that situation? No. And that is the same thing that happens when we miss our purpose as individuals or as even a, a team or a group of individuals in a business. Once we're aligned to purpose, now we're cooking with gas. So that's why purpose is essential and a necessary starting point, in my opinion. I love your analogy, how you get there with the gas, because it really puts it on. One thing I found is, you know, I sold my business in 2012. And for a couple of years there, I really, I knew what I wanted to do, but it didn't really define why. And until I did define that why and that purpose, which to me was the purpose that I wanted to be a servant leader because I felt like I had many opportunities and I was able to climb that mountain that I, my decision was I wanted to help other people get to their mountain time, not by themselves because it's too lonely up on the mountain if you climb it by yourself. Instead, who can I bring along to it? And that really became a resonating theme for me is how can I be that servant leader there? And when you start to define that, it really does put the gas on things and allows you to move quicker and faster. And number one, just the clarity, you know, because clarity is about opening the window of opportunity. It's there. So let's go into that because I think, right, you've shut up purpose greatly. And now about how you talk about and you describe yourself as this subconscious behaviorist. Can you tell me more about that? And what are you actually meaning by subconscious behaviorist? Right. So, you know, um, the term subconscious obviously refers to that which lies beneath the surface. So it, the way <clears throat> I, I see it is this. So we have the, it's usually what lies beneath the surface. So let's start there. So as a, as a, as a coach yourself and, and, you know, as a teacher of other leaders, you know, somebody comes to you and says, hey, Gary, hey, we've got this problem. Um, we need to double our sales, but we don't know what's going on and blah, 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 blah. And you, you, chances are one of the things you're going to do is you're going to start asking questions to find what lies beneath the surface. Because it's usually what lies beneath the hood. Under the hood, that's where the issue is, right? It's not your desire to expand and do all of this stuff. Those are conscious ideas. So it is the same way that we approach problem solving or goal attainment. Um, Carl Gustav Jung, um, a you know, former Swiss psychoanalyst, said, unless you make the unconscious conscious, it will control your life and you will call it fate. You have a lot of individuals, you have a lot of successful individuals. They, they behave a certain way. They're maybe, you know, say for instance, if a person is a, an executive but has a drinking problem, <laughs> well, you can tell them stop drinking is going to ruin your business, but that's not going to help. Not if they had issues from childhood that they're really, because alcoholism is an escape mechanism, right? So what we do then is I probe beneath the surface to find what programs are running this behavior because the behavior is an expression of a problem. Even in an organization, in a team, if people are not, you know, coming together, they're not, you know, seeing eye to eye, there's a problem there. Sometimes it could even be the owner, right? And that is a problem that lies beneath the surface. So even culture is a subconscious program that runs an organization. So that concept could apply to both groups of people and individuals. But in the individual case where I am of the believer that if you can help the leader of the company 
sort their minds out, their company is going to be good. So what we do is basically work with these individuals to find out what kind of mental scripts they are running, right? Say, for instance, the person says, I can't trust anybody. I have to do it by myself. Huh, that's a program they're running. So that general idea is we try to figure out this behavior. And then once we identify the behavior, I can help them change that program or change that script. Once we can change the reel, the, the movie, the whole thing changes, right? Because that the expression, their behavior is just an automatic expression of their programming. So that's basically the idea behind subconscious behaviorism, you know, obviously steeped in psychology. Um, but yes. We could go so deep there, um, <laughs> but I'm going to give an analogy to bring yeah. it to the surface and make people think about it because you did a great job defining it. I think it's so true. It's kind of like the perfect example is um, what sunk the Titanic. It wasn't what they saw above ground. Absolutely. It was what was underneath. So think about that for your life. What is below ground? We all have things from our past that maybe we don't like, things, experiences. And there are some people that always take the victim role and say, uh, poor me, poor me, I've had this and this was bad in my life. And then there's other people that take the high role, which they realize that past is important, it, but it's not going to dictate who they are. And as leaders, think about what that does. And that's kind of where I want to take it is in that role of the conscious mind, how it plays in the life of an entrepreneur or a business leader or a salesperson. How does that affect them if they're always stuck in that subconscious mind? Um, and what role do you think that plays in those areas, Nathan? I mean, what happens is then they, they're, running, they're running on autopilot. So they do not have conscious control of the system. Um, it's funny. I just thought about this, you know, years ago, we had this um, Toyota brake pedal thing that was, a, it was an issue. It's similar. The, the car took over. They had no control. Doesn't matter. You're going to crash, right? So when a salesperson or a leader is being ran by automatic scripts, they don't have control. So even though that driver knew... I want to stop. The car said, nope, you're not, and kept going. So say, for instance, in the case of a salesperson, if a salesperson has a subconscious concept that selling is, is bad, um, charging people high fees for their product is bad, right? It usually will express in the way they offer the sale. It will express in the way they come across to their clients. You know, you've got other people too in um, sales who say, oh, buyers are liars. Well, if you have that belief, <laughs> it's going to reflect in your work, right? And that's the whole thing where they say, where I was saying, if you allow those programs to control your life or you don't allow them to come to the surface, it will control your life and you will call it fate. Those are those people who go and say, well, I tried selling, yeah, nope, not doing it. It's not a good deal, right? But all of these things are unconscious programs that are running the results. Same thing like a leader who cannot take criticism or who always blame people. Well, if you do that, you will have a problem retaining talent. And hopefully once we fix that internal program, the way they come across to their team changes and people stay. So it, it, the, the effects are not to be understated at all. Yeah, and I think that's a real key. And, you know, now that we are in the second quarter of the year, as I talked at the very beginning, some people have set goals for themselves. But what they're allowing is their subconscious mind, if they're not succeeding and they've hit a few roadblocks, well, see, this always happens to me. And that mind, and just by what they're saying to themselves, even if they don't say it out loud, they say it internally, it stops them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go one way real quick here. And I know you'll be comfortable with this is what is a strategy that they could use that person that does sometimes always think the bad happens to them? How could they start to reframe that for themselves and change that in their mindset? I mean, in the first thing is obviously, um, <laughs> same thing they do in, in, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, right? You have to know the problem 
And then you have to accept the problem. Acceptance is the first step to change. The issue is that sometimes people cannot identify the problem um, and then they have difficulty accepting it. Once you accept, you know, I'm fairly rude to customers and that could be a defense mechanism that they've had. Maybe they've, they grew up being criticized their whole life. So they, they had this defense that comes up naturally. If they are unable to see and accept where somebody says, hey, let's say for instance, you're coaching somebody, you say, hey, I kind of observe your interaction with your clients. It wasn't the most warm, right? So once they can accept that, then they can, we can look at what outcome would you want? I'd like to be more relaxed. I'd like to be warm and welcoming. One of the simple ways and one of the simple things that individuals can do is then they can affirm that for themselves. There are other things that, can, that needs to be done because sometimes their belief may be so strong that even the affirmation can't get through. But just identifying, I would like to be more calm and poised when challenged by clients, for instance. And if they can affirm that and continuously affirm that for themselves, I, I put them on certain protocols, but if they can just write that out, affirm that, make that a mini goal for themselves, see themselves in that state, then the change should begin to happen organically, albeit slowly, but it will at least happen and they can start moving in the right direction. So we've talked about you as an individual, what you can do. We've talked about your role as a leader, as an entrepreneur, a salesperson, your role that you play in life. Let's now look at it as their approach to how you can help people and their teams improve their performance. Because when they recognize this, of course, I know from my high performance training that that can totally change the game because now you're truly making a difference in them improving that performance. But what's that really allows them to move forward to be able to, for their teams to improve their performance as a group? So what I, what I, I, I do is, I think we may, we're, we're going to cover this later on, but I'm going to start now. So maybe we can put finishing touches on it. But in almost every situation, I, I really approach this thing in the same way, very systematically, because I've seen it play out over and over and over again. Is first off, we need to identify where we are, right? We gain a sense of direction. We want to gain clarity of where we are. And then we start looking at the elements of direction, which in, in this case would be purpose, vision, goals, strategy, things like that. Because even if a team says, hey, you know, we're not getting along. We, we, we're not getting along. If we can set a clear direction, okay, what is the desired outcome? We want to get along better. Okay, now, what is the purpose of this intention? Because when we do, we're all going to be happier and work's going to be easy and this, that, and the other, right? So now we've attached a why to that intention. What would it look like? What would it feel like? And we start breaking that down. So it's not just a random idea. Because what tends to happen is there are a lot of leaders and business owners who tell their people, well, you guys should do this. You guys should be nicer to each other and then leave it that way. And that's because there is not enough clarity. So after clarity, then we go to, that was the conscious part. We go to the subconscious part, which is, okay, what are the obstacles? What has happened in the past? Um, how can we you know, fix these beliefs? Because now Johnny, you know, I got into an issue with Johnny in the past and I don't think we'll, we'll get along ever again, right? So if we can fix these subconscious beliefs, now we can then switch to habits. We can then design the right habits that they can use to reach their outcomes. Once we've disabled the belief, okay? Um, and then basically then use leverage. We can employ leverage either in a form of accountability or other strategies to ensure that those habits are maintained. And after that, they should be on the right path. Some great information. I hope you're taking notes. If you're driving or you're exercising while you're listening to this, this is going to be one of those podcasts you're going to have to go back and take some notes on because Nathan is really giving us a lesson here on how you can change anything that you want in your life. If you really get into your subconscious, put your purpose to it, really find out that clarity that's there. Now, Nathan, I want to share with them a fun fact. Um, you used to work for me at one time. 
and right. was a great team member and a great, um, I always called my um, people team members, so I can't even say the word employee because that's how we recognized him. And he did some sales for us and did a great job for us. But I'm curious, how did you end up doing this and what made you kind of focus or decide to seek this path of helping others? Yeah, I mean, it is, it is um, the natural progression of life. You know, it is said that everything in nature seeks to expand to its fuller and greater expression. And in the event that an individual does not use, Kafka said that if an individual does not use his potentialities to his fullest extent, that individual is sick right? If you don't use your arm, your arm dies. And so I did realize that I did have potential um, to do more, right? So at the time after I, I left that particular sales position in your company, I, I went into a different sales position um, because I realized that I had the potential to, to do more, to do better in sales. And it was a little bit of a challenge too. I'd seen somebody who went and did it and this person wasn't the best salesperson there was. And I was like, um, if this person can do it, I can do it too. And I can do it better. So it was a positive challenge to step up to my higher potential. And when I did, and I went into automotive sales, I worked for Toyota. You know, I recall one day sitting and I was, I was very successful. I was doing very well, you know, six figure plus income at an early 20s. And I sat one day and I thought to myself, is this really what I'm here to do? Back to this whole purpose thing, right? Because growing up, I had always had this experience in many ways where people had said, you know what, you're gonna do big things, you're gonna impact a lot of people. I've had strangers come up to my mom and I tell them that, and we'd always look at them funny. So I sat out and I asked myself, is this that, right? How many people can I impact selling cars? Quite a few, because I sold quite a few, but not to that extent. So again, once again, I, I was pushed to rise to a higher potential. And part of it also came from developing myself. So I got a coach and all of that stuff so I could sell better. But then I realized that what I was learning was what I needed to share and teach to other people. So it just became a natural progression where the student became the teacher and it also became something that was in, a, in harmony with who I was um, in the first place. Well, a couple of things I want to stick out is number one, he was always a learner. So even when he worked for us, he was a learner. See how he talked about that became a journey. And I know still today he's a learner and he's reading books. So for you sitting out there and if you're thinking about, well, I don't know what my purpose is. The first thing is start just reading some books getting some information, take the information in. You're listening to this podcast for a reason. You're taking in information, take that to the next level. And then you really, that will come to you over time. That clarity doesn't come overnight. That's a long process that allows you to do that, but it's allowing yourself that opportunity to allow that clarity to be able to come to you as time goes. Boy, I tell you, Nathan, you and I could go on probably for several hours talking about different topics here, and we'll have you back again on another podcast. But kind of before we wrap up and kind of be head to the recharge round, I'd like to share with them a little bit. You and I have been talking a little bit, and we don't have it defined yet, so the total clarity is not there. But I think it's good because this fall we're working on trying to really create something um, for the community that we'd like to do. And I'll let you kind of share from your standpoint and then I'll jump in and we'll share back and forth a little bit of what we want to do because we want to give people the opportunity basically to be able to see us live and I'll let Absolutely. you take it from there. Absolutely. Yeah, it is something I'm excited about. Um, but I, I, I did, you know, and as you believe also, think that we're long overdue for um, an opportunity for entrepreneurs, business leaders, to be able to have an in-person experience um, where they could learn and they could grow, they could develop themselves, especially in this area in the Midwest. I, I don't see a lot of activity in the personal growth section, but as every high performing individual will tell you, this is essential, this is imperative. And then we're looking at this marriage of strategy and mindset they cannot be separated, right? Um, I'm reminded of a quote that said that you can play the black keys of a piano. 
You can play the white keys of a piano, but for harmony, you must play both the black and the white, right? So a leader who's only looking at strategies, tactics, and systems, but not paying attention either to their mindset or to the mindset of their people is playing only one key of that piano. So I believe that having this opportunity to, you know, teach and share what we have learned, the best of what we've learned will help accelerate their, you know, the learning. It will give people an introduction to us, but you know, a, a few hours can change your life because one thing, one idea can absolutely change your business. And that is what we're hoping um, this opportunity will, will be able to do for folks. Yeah, and I think you nailed it. It's really about putting the two together, but making it a live experience to where you have a chance to really take in some information. And then really, ultimately, our goal is for you to go out and decide what that purpose is for you. And definitely, there'll be people in, that would love to help you with that. But that's not the thing. It's really allowing you that chance to discover it. The clarity is the key to everything. I kind of put down a quote recently, said, clarity is the window of opportunity. Absolutely. And I think that is what clarity does for you. It's not just about writing your goals down, but putting that why or you're doing it as you go forward. Well, before we jump into the recharge round, Nathan, why don't you share with them your website, how they can connect with you? And I think you have a call to action too. And then we'll come back and we'll share it at the end also. Absolutely. Um, you can reach me um, at www.quantumleapglobal.com. Quantum leap, as in jumping, global.com. Um, and also on that site, you should be able to take a quiz. You should be able to take a quiz that will tell you what your number one obstacle is. Um, this is from the seven things that I had mentioned earlier, the, the, what I call the quantum leap pathway that everybody has to go through in that process of goal achievement. Find out which one you need the most work on. It's a very interactive quiz, and um, I'm sure you'll get some information out of that. So please check that out. If you didn't get that or couldn't write that down at this time, it's all in show notes, chargepodcast.com. You can click on the link right there and it'll take you right to quantumlinkglobal.com. So I know that quiz that is available to you. And we'll share the at the very end also. Well, Nathan, we talked about some of these things. So I'm going to make these more rapid fire for you. Right. But share with me, we've talked a little bit about mindset, but how do you think that affects your daily living? they say man is mind. <laughs> Everything we do is mind. And so the ability to control one's mind is the difference between being tossed around by like a, a ship on the, on the open seas because stuff happens. It's either we're going to do what it is we've set our intention to do, or we're going to be open to whatever is out there. So having a clear and having mastery of your mindset ensures that you can tackle your day right? You can be fully charged through your day. And when those things happen that we cannot help, that we can quickly get ourselves back on track. Um, that is the biggest thing for me. And as you also mentioned earlier, which is, I repeat this so many times, success, high achievement, it's a lonely road. That journey is absolutely lonely, right? And sometimes, not sometimes, if you do not master your mindset, you're going to quit. So if you want to reach the pinnacle of your, the top of your mountain, you must have the right mindset for it. And that is, that is why I think it is, it is not, it's non-negotiable in the life of any high achieving individual. Great. Now, we both talked about we love to exercise. They know we exercise. But I'm going to use this example for you. The days that it's hard for you to get to do your create that energy for yourself. What do you do then on those days that maybe it's just, ugh, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. What do you do to move yourself forward? Depends on what it is. Depends on what it is that I am trying to do. Um, you know, one of the things I also sometimes will tell some entrepreneurs is there are some entrepreneurs that I tell them, take a step back, just step away, right? Because unfortunately, we, we push too hard sometimes and all we need is just take a step back, take a breath, and the obstacle it resolves. So depending on what it is that I'm wanting to do. But if it is something like, say, for instance, you know, go to the gym or do something that was scheduled, 
it's again realizing when we have that direction you know they say when you have a strong enough purpose and vision it pulls you it is what it is right so that purpose and that vision usually pulls me through even when i do not have power of my own right and and that's being anchored to something greater than yourself and and so and it also comes from years of habit, right? When you can create this habit of thinking, habit is automatic. So even when you're not stepping on the gas, you've already created positive momentum. And so that is why it is necessary. You don't think of mindset when you need it. You build mindset so it takes you through the moments you need it. Excellent. How about the number one connection or maybe it's a relationship that's made the biggest impact on your life? Man, there's so many people um, that have been impactful. There's so many people, but I don't know that I can put a number one to it, but I will tell you this. One of the things that I, that I found really beneficial was having the opportunity to work in your organization, having an opportunity to work for you. I'll tell you why. Because those skills took me to the next level. Right. So I remember when, you know, when, when um, we had the, you know, you had the store and you would usually say, you know, walk everybody to the door, you know, because you had this clear picture of what the experience you wanted to create. And that's that whole purpose vision thing, right? Everybody got aligned to that purpose and that vision. And, you know, that habit went with me went to, to, to automotive sales, where I would walk my clients to the door. We, we, I treated them like family. It, it was responsible for so much of my success. Another thing that you did was, I don't know if you remember, but you, I'm sure you remember, you used to give people that book, The Traveler's Gift. I still have it, right? And, and so these little things make a difference. And if I can hopefully drive any point home to any of the listeners here, is do not take the little things for granted, especially when you're responsible for leading other people, because it counts. Those things made a difference. So that's, that's really what came to my mind in this particular moment. So I would say it, it was a great experience. It's an honor. And it's even, you know, how life goes full, uh, you know, circle that we're speaking now on a completely different platform uh, and for a completely different reason, right? But those are those seeds that you planted that has sprouted and has come back around. And I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that and for the kind words and, and just knowing that you can make a difference. That's the thing. And somebody else you're sitting in the audience and maybe it's about your son or daughter or maybe a friend of your son and daughter and they come over you could make that impact that could really change the direction in their life. And that's the message I think Nathan was telling us is we all have that capability. Take that responsibility because just by telling someone, go out and make it a great day, you could change that whole aspect that they have. And just don't forget that you are responsible for that. And that's the difference maker that you can become. Now, Nathan, share me an advice. Maybe I know you've got plenty of them, but what advice has influenced you the most in your life? Um, I would say the, the words of um, Earl Nightingale used to repeat that a lot. And we've heard it a lot these days, but you become what you think about. You become absolutely what you think about. Yeah. And it ties into the same thing that Napoleon Hill and said, desire is the starting point of all achievement. If you have desire, you're going to be thinking about that quite a bit. And so that statement is, is really the testament, I think, of anything that anybody who has created anything has experienced that. And that particular idea has permeated much of my life. And I probably would peg that as one of the most important ideas that anybody needs to be aware of. Well, I know you're a reader because I know you're a leader. So this one's going to be tough, but you got to bring it down to one. What book would you recommend and why did you love it? Um, working with the law. Mm. I, I do not 
it's very interesting. I don't, I don't recall who, uh, the name has escaped me, but it's easy to find because it's actually in the public domain. It's an old book. It's, it's easy to read, but that particular book really opened my eyes as to the relationship of the non-physical part of our reality to our physical. And it speaks, it, it talks about the natural laws of the universe, right? Um, you say, for instance, like the law of resistance. And it, that's kind of where that whole idea of sometimes you have to take a step back because pushing, you're creating a, a, a force. So it's understanding these laws that govern the operation of things. And so you're not working against the law, you learn to work with the law, right? And so working with the law was one that when I read it, um, it was, it was quite life changing and I still recommend it to people today. Yeah. Great book. I would highly recommend it. Also, we'll have it in show notes for you. You made it down to the last question. What legacy do you want to leave the world in one sentence or less? Um, to be one of the greatest teachers of my generation. I've always had a, um, had Dr. Wayne Dyer as a, as a hero, but however, obviously I'm going to be someone different but just to be one of the greatest teachers of my generation, someone who can inspire other people to understand the potential that lies within and to know how to unleash that potential. Well, as I said in your bio, they dub you as the young Wayne Proctor for a reason. And I think we've been experiencing that um, throughout this podcast. And I can't thank you enough for saying yes to join us on the Charge podcast, Nathan. Share with them again how they can um, get the information and be able to check you out and be able to take that survey that you have. Absolutely. Um, and the website link is www.quantumleapglobal.com. Um, Quantum Leap global.com. So it's uh, right on the homepage. We will have it there. Nathan, thank you again for joining the Charge Podcast, my friend. Thank you, Gary. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Chargers, you've got a lot of information there. A lot of great. I loved, we talked about the subconscious mind and the things that we can do to change our mindset, to move us forward and then move us into those goals. But really it's about defining what is your purpose. And are you doing what you're meant to do? And we're not telling you jump off a cliff. We're telling you experience it. Give yourself time. Give yourself space to be able to determine what that is each and every day. And some of that is just slowing things down and asking yourself to be able to get that clarity that you need. Maybe you need to start journaling. Maybe you need to start meditating. There's multiple ways you can go. You've got to decide what it's right for you. I can't tell you. I know what works for me but it may not work for you. So I want you to kind of dig into that this next week and decide what action am I going to do to move forward, to be able to determine what my purpose is and then define it. And there's resources out there that can help you with that. Reach out to Nathan or myself, and we'll give you some of the examples of how you can define what that purpose is. Because when I define my purpose, that it's the purpose of my life is to be a servant leader, to live fully energized with joy and presence to, so that I might inspire others to give love and make a difference each and every day. It made a real difference in my life because I know why I'm doing these podcasts now. Chargers, I can't thank you enough for saying yes and join us each and every week. Remember, like and share it because the more people that learn about the podcast, the more people we can help and really let them find their purpose. Thanks for joining us on the Charge Podcast. We'll see you back here next week at the same time. Make it a great day. See you soon. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.